Okay, and we're back with another season two, another a video in season two of the creative season on YouTube, and I'm super excited. Okay, we are doing pumpkins and we are doing stripes this week. A couple years ago, I was really into stripes, and I'm back with the stripes because they're fun. So a couple of things I was doing, um, stripes really create a fun look, a vibrant look. I've actually, we're gonna show you a shortcut. So I was just really playing with stripes and almost like if you're looking at a, a a barn or a house, and I was using blue. We might change it up though, a different color today. Um, but we're gonna create some stripes, we're gonna create boots. I decided not to do like the whole girl because that might be a little bit much. I'm afraid the video would be just too long. So, um, and a couple of pumpkins. So we're getting into fall. Remember last week we really were easing into our golden hour. And this time we're gonna do some pumpkins and some boots because as it gets colder we like to wear our boots so I have sketched out some boots here and I what I do um, is sometimes I will go grab a pair of boots and look at them but if you don't have boots or if you want to grab Pinterest boots are pretty easy to sketch as far as shoes go you do the little uh, the front part here you almost make it look like at the top of a little hill maybe a little bit of pointy if you like pointy boots I'm gonna move it in a little bit closer there we go. And I then do like a little bit of this in and out, like it's a hill on the side, but lay making it longer as it goes towards the ankle. Because if you look, even look down at your feet, you see that curvature there. I've got pretty wide feet, so mine might not be as much, but it almost looks like it's a little bit of a croissant even, if that, if that helps. And then with boots, they're not typically terribly form fitting, right? I'm thinking these are almost those nice boots that you go hiking in, like not quite the galoshes, but similar. And so then we curve in and then we come out. So I just go out and I go up to, and I'm thinking about the knee here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and you can see, I just put in my little leg and then I do this curve around that the leg to create that sense of the leg going in. Because a lot of times, especially if you're wearing the skinny jeans or some stretchy pants, hopefully I'll cover it a little bit so you can see that. And usually if you think about it, we're keeping our legs pretty close together. So sometimes they're touching. And this girl, she's carrying a pumpkin, so she's got her legs spread a little bit here. To, maybe it's a big pumpkin. Well, in this girl, this boot girl, we have her legs right close together. Okay, so go ahead and take a minute, sketch out the boots here. And then I have a pumpkin here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna line up. We're gonna do kind of a, a nice fat pumpkin here. and get that guy, give him a nice little squat trunk there, little stem that was cut off. And then next to him, I'm even gonna, they're gonna almost be touching here. Do a pumpkin here. I'm making these guys a little bit bigger. And this guy, he's gonna have a little bit more of a longer stem because I like to mix it up a bit with the stems and the shapes of the pumpkins. I think pumpkins are so fun in all of the different shapes. You can see I'd got my vertical line here, or my horizontal line. I'm gonna go ahead and erase that so it doesn't show up when I start painting. And so I've got three pumpkins here. I think that'll be good. That'll look really nice. And we'll end up doing some shadowing, some other fun stuff. Now, for those lines, go ahead and make your sketch here. You could take like a ruler and then create the lines. But you know what I like to do is I take that masking tape, the same masking tape that we use to tape everything down. I cut it in half because this one, particular one, I got at the hardware store, so it's thick. And I'm actually going to um, lay, after I've sketched, I've got my vertical line or my horizontal line where the, the, the bottom of the, the building is. And I'm just gonna lay my tape right on top of it. And yes, it's gonna be on the drawings, that's fine. And then I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I'm gonna go over here. I'm not being really exact here. I'm gonna go right here. We're gonna paint those stripes first, as you probably guessed, and let them dry. And there we go, that one will cover. We won't end up getting any stripes there, which is fine. And then finally, this one, 
right here. So that's one, two, three, four, five pieces of tape. If you want to pause the video and grab your tape. And just so you know, I am using the Strathmore watercolor paper. It is the 5.5, five and, five and a half inches times eight and a half inches. And of course we're doing it lengthwise tonight or today, depending on when you are watching this. I'm letting, the sun is going down, so I'm hoping we're catching the light, the last, that golden hour right now. Okay, so for this, instead of the blue today, I'm actually going to do a brown. Just to mix it up, but you can do whatever color you'd like to do. Think about, too, what would complement nicely against your nice pumpkins. So brown, even a nice plum purple. I started to talk about the fall colors, and a lot of People may not realize that um, you know you have beautiful magentas, plums, purples. Those are all so beautiful in the fall, and they look so nice with the toasty browns. All right, so I'm going to. The nice thing with tape is you don't have to be so careful. I can go ahead and just set my paint down there. And the one thing I do need to be careful about is the stems, right? And the, this that I don't color in all of my pumpkin. So in the first one, it was easy. I was very carefree. Now I'm like, okay, gotta make sure I don't color in my pumpkins. There we go. And sometimes you'll see the paint gets underneath there a little bit, not a big deal. Not a big deal. You know us, we always fix it, huh? We just go with the flow and I can be a little bit more carefree, but then I've got part of my pumpkin popping up here and you can leave a little bit of white even if you'd like, just again to create that watercolor effect. I'll tap in a little bit more paint, letting it go where it will. I'm gonna go ahead and do this outside one a little bit here. Be careful of this pumpkin. Okay, very nice. Coming a little bit closer here. And then this, the middle ones are always where I have to be a little bit more careful. That I don't get the pumpkin and the leg, right? Okay. And whatever color you did, we're going to let it dry for just a minute. Okay. There we go. Okay, so while we're letting that dry, I'm gonna look around, and you know what I think I am gonna do too, is I'm going to go ahead and create some of those shadows around my boots and around the pumpkins. And so for the shadowing, I am going to start out actually with that nice brown. So I'm gonna just do some shadowing around the boots in between it, not a lot. And then the bottom of the pumpkin, kind of going around the side thinking about where our sun might be coming down. And there's gonna be shadows, especially these two guys so close together. Put some more dark in there. There we go. And then I think I'm gonna take, you remember I was really enjoying that gamboge, which is a nice, it's like a deep yellow. If you have a yellow ochre or add a little bit of red or orange to your yellow, I'm gonna go just down here. I'm just gonna dance and color around just a little bit. Maybe let the shadowing go into it a little bit. We might come and put down a leaf or whatnot here, but just to create shad uh, shadowing. Okay, let's go ahead and take off. I'm gonna, for the sake of time, I'm gonna take off my stripes so we can keep painting. Of course, you're free to let it dry if you feel like it's not quite dry yet. Isn't that fun? And the tape did a lot of the work for us, creating those really nice stripes. I can tell some of my paint is still wet, so I'm going to be careful still. And you can see on this painting, I did quite a bit of stripes, so I really had fun of actually doing the opposite, of really creating more narrow on the white, really thin strips, so I could do more, more stripes. And you have lots of flexibility in that. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... I've been starting, instead of going bold, I've been using like a light yellow, the Gamboge, and I have been putting that on first, letting some white pop out, and then bringing in my other colors later. 
and I might have to do some, I saw some really nice gourds that were like green, ah, oh, we'll have to do some nice dark green ones too. All right, so as you can tell, we're just real light now. And you know what? I think I'm gonna make my boots plum because that sounds like fun. And I always like a pop of color somewhere, right? That's why I think I was having fun with the blue walls because it was just such a bright pop of color. I was really enjoying it. So I'm gonna grab that plum and I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to lay that down. Again, I'm not gonna go completely solid. I'm gonna let some white, and you can see got a little bit of the brown, so I'll, I'll stay away from there. Go in that curve, and bring you, pulling that paint down, and then going out. And you're thinking too where it's getting darker. And I've got a little bit, oop, touch that brown a little bit, that's okay. We're just gonna Get it right out, just pressing that down. Those are fun, aren't they? Now those are some really cute boots. I have some boots. It's a little bit warm to wear them quite yet, but I, I do, I have them pulled out. Have not pulled them out quite yet. And then last year, I just, I wore my, my short boots. They were kind of like the ankle high so much, I ended up putting holes in the bottom. That was such a bummer. In fact, I was on a work trip and I was going to Denver and it was snowing. Surprise, surprise. It was, I didn't think it was Denver though. The weather's always unpredictable. It was, I think October. And I had the boots for, I think maybe two years, three years. And I didn't know there was a hole until I started walking in the snow. And I figured out there was a hole really fast. So, okay. It's funny how often the things that don't go well on trips, those end up marking the trip sometime. And you look back and I went to Target to, they were the only, but they, I think I had my high heels with me, but um, you don't want to run around in those. So I needed, I thought I'll go to Target. I'm sure I can find a nice, maybe a cute pair of boots that were a good price. And I just had the, met the nicest people there. They were so kind. And it was just a really nicely put together store and, where did I go for dinner? I think there's a Chipotle there nearby. And by the time I got the rental car, it was it had been quite the day. So it was a wonderful way to finish up the day of getting some food. And I remember getting buying some tea at Target. So when I went to the hotel, I could make some tea. Okay, so let's start dipping in those darker colors. I realize I'm having so much fun with these boots. Okay, there. Now with this one, as you can see, I let I'm letting some white spot in, white in, but I'm, I did a lot of orange there. On on this guy, I'm going to do show you another way. I've been playing. I'm going to take my brush that has more of the pointy edge. Let's make sure if I can tap on that here. We've got that pointy edge here. It's trying to find it. There we go. And I'm going to go grab. I'm going to go actually into the brown for that stem. And I'm gonna come right over here on the top of this pumpkin. And I'm gonna create that stem and pull it down. And then I'm going to, you know how pumpkins have that beautiful, those beautiful ridges. I'm gonna go ahead and just create a couple of those divots right inside with the brown. And just pull the paint down. And then we're gonna come back with the orange. But I wanna just create the divots. I'm gonna pull it to the bottom so we get almost create that shadowing like that have a different look to it, doesn't it? And you could just leave it like that if you liked it. There's no reason you couldn't. And I'll do that over here. And our brown might come up pretty close to this brown, so what we're gonna end up doing is I'm gonna add some purple to it. In fact, I might just do that right now. That way we're creating a different kind of brown, a deeper brown, right up against it. And once again, oh, and it's creeping into that orange because I got the colors a little close, but no big deal. In fact, I'm, I think I'm just gonna leave that one there. We'll end up blending it together. And I'm gonna take this down just a little bit here and just play with it, kind of let the water paint go where it will. Okay, great, so we're gonna, I'm putting, laying the paint on a little heavy, so I'm gonna have to watch that. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna add 
we're going to pretend that there's some hay or there's something on this floor. Maybe we're in a barn. Maybe we're at the fair. I guess none of us are at fairs this year, are we? Okay. I think we have some of our outdoor, though, like the orchards are open or will be opening. And I'm excited to maybe go hunt for a pumpkin just for the fun of it, you know? Okay, so we have some shadowing there. We've got our boots down. It still is pretty watery looking. It's very watercolory, which I'm loving. As you know, we always have fun creating very loose and then we can have fun coming back with our paint um, or with our pens. So we do need to keep, what color do we want our pants to be? I think I am gonna make it um, blue. I'm, that's where I'm gonna pull in my blue. And I'm gonna mix the blue with a little bit of brown so it's not so bright. Or if you'd like, you can mix it with some Payne's Gray and that will actually create somewhat of maybe a jeans kind of coloring if you had skinny jeans, which I wasn't a big fan of skinny jeans originally, but they are great for boots, aren't they? Regular jeans just don't like to go into boots so well. Now remember too that this is kind of around the knee, so I, kind of, I sketch in a little bit of the knee so I don't paint it all in. Then I go through and paint in. And I'm just going to do this lightly. Right at the top, good. I was concerned my paint might be too wet and it would blend, but we're doing okay. We're doing okay here. It's supposed to be loose anyways, a nice loose watercolor. We're going to let that blend in here. Okay, so let me see our time. So this is about 16 minutes now. So really what I want to do now is I am Get a little, get a little bit more of the purple. We're gonna lay down a little bit more color right in here, and right in here. I'm also gonna lay a little bit more right in here, showing we're creating that sense of what's near and what's farther away. I'm also gonna put more color right almost at the heel, the front, really the the top of the heel. Okay, so we've got that. That looks great. I need to get a stem over on my third pumpkin. So I'm gonna pull that guy. And this was my tall stem, and I did add some purple to the brown, so we've got that different delineation of color here. It is a lot of brown in this one, and maybe I would have done that differently, but this is how we decide what we learn what our favorite color palettes are, don't we? I am gonna add some more orange over here to these pumpkins. And I'm gonna to have to let it dry before I do my pen work. And this one is pretty wet. So I'll show you what I did with the, with my other gal, with my other boot gal. Okay, while this guy dries, we are gonna need to add a little bit of purple because remember, we don't like to let that be our only pop of purple. Sometimes we do, but I wanna get a little bit more purple in. So I think I'm gonna add purple right in here into this some shadowing. Just a little bit down here and down here and over here. Just creating that really, really pretty cohesive look to the painting and adding some more orange here. I'm gonna go back with the brown too. and just create a little bit darker on some of these. On some of the walls, just a little bit. Okay, that's gonna be super cute when we're all done. It's gonna be super, super cute, I love it. And then I'll show you again with this one, what I did with that pen work is you could take your pen and you can just start sketching details like if you wanted to sketch detail work, if you want to do a buckle, and then around your pumpkins. I was pretty heavy with this one. And one of the things I didn't do that you can do is you can take your white marker, so this kind of white gel marker, to create uh, that sense because I did go in so heavy with the paint here. And if I wanted to lighten up as if the light was hitting it, I can come back over here and then do that a little bit. In fact, I should do that. That just kind of creates that really fun, whimsical the light splashing, which I lost when I, I think I did several layers of paint. And I could always come back too with a, just a glaze. 
of a, like a light yellow would be really cute. I can come around here too on my boots and see again some of that detail work. If you want to come back through and showing where the light's bouncing off the top of the boots, for example, and just play with it. I've got a little bit of the light coming off here. But again, have a lot of fun with these. Just a really fun way to celebrate the fall. Plus, we're really working on our complementary colors and also doing some stripes. So we're a little bit of a different technique, which is always fun too. All right, you guys, this was um, our second video of the fall season for the creative season. If you would like to get updates, don't forget to sign up over at thecreativeseason.com slash for our backslash blog and you can find the latest blog post and a place to sign up for the newsletter. I will see you guys back here next week. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Take care.